My name is Sid, and I work with a company called Playware. And uh, Playware has been around since 2005. We've been doing a lot of stuff in serious games. We're essentially a serious games company. Uh, it has been a personal dream of mine to build VR, AR applications um, ever since like Holodeck. And that's, that's one of those things that I've always wanted to do. And, uh, and, and, and I got to do that. Actually, I got to do that pretty early. In 2007, we started building this. This is a 40i lab. It's a 350-degree immersive cave environment with multi-touch screens. Uh, 2007, we actually had to build our own touch screens. Uh, there were no touch screens in the market. So uh, there's 45 square meters of interactive touch screens. It's still one of the largest touch screens um, in the world. We've done, uh, you know, we did, uh, we sort of upped the ante in 2005, 2009. What we did is uh, we allowed uh, students to actually connect to these touch screens with their mobile devices. And at that time, it was basically those netbook kind of things. And you could control an avatar that was on the screen with your device uh, acting like a controller. So there were up to about 40 avatars on the screens at the same time. Again, uh, this was part of the Future Schools project. We had a lot of funds, uh, Singtel and NRF and a whole bunch of other uh, people with a lot of money were backing <coughs> it. So if I seem a little cynical throughout this entire conversation and ouch, um, then I apologize. So I've been doing this for some time now. Um, yeah, and uh, we we sort of we started doing big screen touch screens. I, I don't know if you've been to the uh, Indian Heritage Center. There's this actually this is not really big screen now compared to what I just showed you earlier. But this is like the newer generation tech in touch uh, in terms of touch screens. And now you can basically look at historical Singapore um, and navigate. And this is very consumer tech. Um, I love this project. This is a very weird project. It is a camera-based interaction. Uh, uh, basically, people were praying to something I made. Right? I'm that awesome. Uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> just, uh, but it was pretty awesome. Uh, so just carry on. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we, we moved into, when VR came out, we moved into VR very quickly. And we started doing uh, stuff with Oculus. We started doing stuff with uh, Samsung VR. started doing with stuff with Connect and Room Alive and stuff like that. I'm just going to show you a very quick video, uh, not to bore you, but just to like earn the chops of actually going to you know going on to say what I'm going to say in this talk. So this is actually no audio. So this is the Room Alive, uh, and uh, basically what you can do is you can project across, across uh, different kinds of screens, and uh, you can recognize different types of objects, and depending on how you interact with the various objects you can show different kinds of information on the various screens. And now this could be in the real world or it could also be in the virtual world. It still suspiciously looks like touch screens, but nobody cares. It's VR. Um, this is uh, something that we've done with some hospitals and uh, it's extremely disorienting. This is something else we've done with WDA. It's extremely disorienting. Um, <laughs> I just common thread going forward, uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff. The guys just put together this video just today, so. Yeah, this is more interesting. You can actually, we have an authoring tool that can let you set up different kinds of content, and you can embed text files, picture files, video files, um, and again, continue to interact with it through gestures and touch and, and such like, and so on and so forth. Uh, this is uh, the technology that Microsoft calls Room Alive. It's really cool in terms of uh, the fact that it re does, re doesn't require much. It just requires a projector and a connect. Um, it's not so cool because it requires a lot of work. Um, this is something with Oculus we did for Standard Chart Bank. Uh, it's actually a Formula One race simulator. And it worked along with uh, you know, a driving rig. So it had some haptic feedback. There was a seat that shook. There was a wheel that you moved. And that moved the car. And you were. <laughs> sitting in uh, with the Oculus headset and it was supposed to be like you were driving. Most of the people who were driving were bankers and they didn't know how to drive anyways. So we didn't put <laughs> collision into the cars and so you could just basically drive through most of the stuff except the stuff. And then AR and things like that. So, um, so Playway has done a lot of projects. Uh, it's basically, um, basically uh, one of those 
you know, serious games companies. We've been doing this for a long time. And, and, and I guess you picked up on the fact that I'm not very happy about the state of current VR. This is what it promised, right? So No Man's Sky, I could basically essentially experience it, right? That was the whole idea. When we started moving away, where's Jonathan? Jonathan, Jonathan, Jonathan. Yes, when we started moving away from cave systems, the idea was that you would be able to wear this headset and then you won't need the multiple thousand dollars of investment in infrastructure that we used to have need to make you feel like you were in this kind of a world. It, it's supposed to feel something like this, right? This really happy user, and he's like, oh my god, I'm in this virtual <laughs> environment, and it's beautiful, and this, oh, butterfly. <laughs> it's really touching, and it's like the headset is not even there. I don't know if you've actually used Oculus or anything else. It's very much there. You know, the freaking rubber bands, they hurt. The thing hits against your eye. The freaking lenses, you know, the other guy who wore it, the guy who wore it before you, right, had mucousy eyes and he's rubbed his mucus all over the lens and then when you wear it, it's already like, it's unhygienic as anything. It's nothing like this, like it never is like this, right? I've been waiting for that aha moment. We've done, I don't know, I don't know how many projects, we've done over 40 projects in all kinds of fields in serious games and, and, and we've been waiting for this. One person goes, <laughs> doesn't happen, it just doesn't happen. I'm like, and all the other things that you think about, right? There was going to be this beautiful uh, thing that VR is going to be able to do that you don't have to go to meetings anymore, right? You go to VR meetings. Like, I mean, like, as if you really, like, like, the most interesting thing about a meeting is the fact that you get out of your chair. But you didn't need to do that anymore, right? And, 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 and soldiers are going to be having to use this. And they're going to, like, you know, become really great warriors because they, they know how to fight. And doctors, I can just imagine my doctor wearing an oculus and trying to perform a surgery on my intestine or something like this. And it's not a good sight. And let's not forget, like, <laughs> what lies beyond, right? The, we are going to march forward. It, it never, it's not happened. It's not happened yet. I wish it does. It hasn't happened yet, right? <laughs> And so, sorry, this is what actually VR feels like, right? I don't know how many of you have actually used VR kits of all types. You have a massive blood pressure drop, sorry. Go back a slide. Go back a slide. Oh. <laughs> By the way, those of you who don't know that, that's Ian, uh, Ian sorry, Ian, Ian, Witching Hour Studios. Uh, I want everybody to give a huge round of applause. The first very successful Kickstarter campaign for an actual beautiful game. It's a beautiful game. Please go look it up. And Ian, thank you. Thank you um, and in your honor, that's the slide. <laughs> okay, thanks. Okay, sorry. <laughs> no, but actually, this is what VR feels like, right? So you get blood pressure drop, you get uh, heart flutters, you get uh, all kinds of different uh, nausea feelings, you get vertigo, you get. Um, Many, many different things. You have disorientation, your eyes uh, focus uh, is lost when you actually take off the headset. That's a whole new set of symptoms that come in. And pretty much, it doesn't make a difference which headset, which manufacturer, what device you're talking about. Most of, have, most of them actually create this kind of feel. Now, I actually put my, my thrust very strongly into things like HoloLens and Magic Leap and, and this whole bunch of new stuff that promises to overcome some of those issues that VR seems to have today. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if you guys have seen this. There's a something, something, this potentially associated, whatever, factors associated with simulator sickness. This is an old study. None of these issues have been addressed. Not one of these issues have been addressed in current VR technology. Not one. It's very telling. This is stuff that's been around since before these hardware started getting uh, manufactured. This has been around since before Oculus got a $2 billion valuation from, uh, from Facebook. Right? And there's a whole bunch of different kinds of issues and all of these exist today. Right? Um, not to mention, uh, of course, a whole slew of other problems that arise from the fact that the equipment is uncomfortable, the technology isn't actually up to speed, and the experience is subpar. <laughs> Okay, so end of rant. I hope basically we don't um, end up 
like complete junkies because I think if we are going to literally, you know, you were talking about, Jonathan was talking about the fact that they actually decided to let people stand in one place. It was damn good they let people stand in one place. If it was if those people had tried to move, they would have fallen down. Right? That's the problem. The tracking isn't good. Uh, the issues, there are a lot of issues with hardware. There's a lot of uh, very subtle but very powerful signals that get mixed up. Right? Now, what does this mean as developers? What does this mean as developers? What, do you, what does it mean for you? Okay? Here's what I think it means. Unlike Jonathan, actually, I would hugely encourage every one of you to go back and try to develop something for VR. Because I think the issue is not just with how we expect the technology to move. Because what we're trying to do currently is we know what games look like, what experiences look like, what interactions look like, what user experience looks like today. And we're trying to just sort of pull them all into VR for some reason, right? We're just trying to throw them all whole soul into that, you know, it'll just fit somehow, something will stick, right? It doesn't. What we need to do is we need to start thinking about VR in a completely different way, completely new way, right? We need to think about these experiences, this content, this storytelling in a much more intimate way. You mentioned a locked room. I think that's a good idea, right? We are not there. We are not there yet. Right now we are sitting in malls, right there in the most exposed space there is, right? But how is this going to move? The only way it's going to move is if developers, if game developers, if, if experienced developers start pushing content, thinking about content, thinking about designs that fit this paradigm, this usage paradigm. Right? And why do I think that will work? <laughs> There's only one guy really actually, one of, the, one of the very few people in the world who's making money with VR, right? <coughs> You can be that guy. OK, thank you. Uh, I'm supposed to ask questions. I don't know if you want to. But yeah, I'm oh, sorry. People ask questions, yes. Um, in terms of VR and AR, when we look at VR, uh, there's no like, environment in front of you. So you mentioned people getting motion sick and stuff. Would it then be better to push forward more into AR compared to VR? I personally, as a. Uh, at Playware as a company, we are placing all our bets in AR. Um, I think the only way VR will work is if we get rid of that stupid black box that's in front of your eyes. I think the idea of VR is awesome, but till we actually get away from this issue of isolation, right? Um, I don't think we can actually make very realistic. And even if we did, right? Even if face, like, just imagine Oculus Fat completely real. Right? You could wear Oculus. I, I could stand right here, wear Oculus, and it felt completely real. It's going to kill me really quickly because I'm going to walk into this table. <laughs> and you know what will happen. <laughs> yes? Uh, what do you foresee are the most important uh, innovations to motion control that must be made in the, the next one year? Uh, I actually, personally, I'm a designer. I believe that the most important innovations are going to be all design-related. We are going to set new standards for how you do storytelling with VR. And that's going to come across this, just basically mainly hugely either circumvent or completely make redundant most of these questions of trying to make the, the, the refresh rate or something as fast as a human body can react. I think that reflex, reflexive speed is going to go away. That's, I think, that's my honest opinion. It, yeah. You want to give him one? He asked a question. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'd like to know if what, what is your take on the like the supplement equipment for VR, like uh, the uh, Omnitrix mm -hmm. system that they were uh, hopping, and then there are another, there's a Europe version which is much cheaper, and I think that that would actually improve or uh, sort of uh, enhance the experience for VR. Yeah. I actually, I kind of gave away my answer in, in, in the start, right? Microsoft actually has this technology called Rumulai. It's free. You can download it. It needs a projector and it needs a Kinect, and you're good to go. You can actually overlay all kinds of information into the real environment, and you can project a virtual environment into the real environment, and it's quite good. 
best of all, it is it is a uh, cave technology, so it doesn't actually require you to learn new skills as a human body, right? And you can actually continue to interact with it just like you would with everyday life objects. <laughs> and actually works quite well. And I think the next thing that's going to come very quickly, I'm really excited about the Oculus, sorry, not Oculus, the uh, HoloLens and other uh, AR headsets, which I think will make uh, this thing that we think of as VR really possible because you'll be able to scan the real world. Yes? Um, apart from the actual headset, how important do you think other accessories are in terms of immersion yeah. VR? Uh, actually, if you've used Oculus, just that headset alone will kill you. I don't think you need anything else to die. <laughs> right? The, uh, so I, I, I think the point is redundant. The point is everything else is very cool. But if you can't feel, even if you're standing still, if you can't feel comfortable in an, in, in an environment, then there's no, there's no moving beyond that. Assuming the headset is, say, fine. Okay. Yeah. So uh, some of the things that Jonathan just mentioned, right? you can't actually put a leap in front of it and then try to do hand tracking because it like, doesn't feel real. right? You want to do this and that, not just this. Right, so you want proper hand tracking, hand gesture, gesture control. So I think want uh, like proper awareness of the human body. We work in the serious game space, so we spend a lot of time thinking about posture, body language. We think a lot about emotion, and so we are using like again in cave environments, we are using camera vision to measure things like uh, are you engaged with something, uh, are you feeling stressed, what's your. Uh, we actually measure things like heart rate. We measure things like uh, EEG, EMG, ECG, and so we try to get a much more holistic look at the user, it's not just about what he's trying to do, but where he is at in his emotional state, because that helps us either increase or decrease the tempo of the VR application. So that's one of the things that we are trying to do. right? So I think uh, gesture control, of course, uh, full body motion control and all of those things help. But yeah, after a certain point. Yes. Thank you so much. I'm here for some time. If you have more questions, you can please uh, Talk to me later. Yeah, thanks. I have to ask, does he get... Uh